just a couple of weeks ago, around the time that we found out actually about the GSP Bisping fight, we also found out that Misha Serkinov was back in the UFC. And if you'll recall, had that massive win in Toronto, the crowd erupted for him. They went nuts for him, of course, from Latvia, now living in Toronto. It appeared as though he was that guy at 205 that we had been waiting for, future star, future contender, potential future champion, all very exciting stuff. And then we heard that there were some failed contract negotiations and that the UFC was going to part ways with him. And it all didn't make any sense. For a while, I wanted to get him on the program, but I understand he had to figure out that situation. Happy to hear that he is back. And just this morning, TSN reported out in Toronto that he'll be returning in Stockholm May 28th against Volkan Ozdemir of Switzerland, who had that win over OSP back in Houston uh, last month, the Fight Night Show. So great time to talk to Misha Serkinov himself. He joins us on the phone for the first time on this show. Misha, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Thanks for having me. A pleasure. I've been wanting to have you on the show for uh, for a while now. As you know, happy that you're on now. Um, so there's a lot to discuss with you. Let's actually move backwards. When you won against Nikita Krylov in Toronto, were you confident, okay, you win that fight, were you confident that everything was going to work out, or were you expecting, you know, some negotiations, it was going to be a roller coaster? What were you thinking was going to happen? Um, you know, I kind of wasn't wasn't really sure what to expect. I, I just knew that uh, my fight contract is, is up, and uh, I just have to get a new one, and uh, just... I knew I have to, you know, negotiate and all that. And it's just the thing is I also don't have a manager, so I was kind of trying to do everything myself. So that's why maybe it took a little bit of time. But, you know, it only took us like three weeks, and we worked things out. And I, I got the contract that I, I wanted and uh, just happy to be back in the, in the mix now, you know. Why don't you have a manager? I, I don't know. I just didn't find the right person yet, you know. Um, like I, I work hard and uh, every single time so far people approaching me and have been asking me for certain things they didn't really say what, what they're gonna you know how, how we're gonna work you know I don't really see why I need to give a certain percentage of someone who's just willing to negotiate for me you know I can do it myself as well you know I would love to have a manager or somebody you know who can bring something to the table have you ever had a manager in your career? I did have a manager at one time, and I just didn't really have a that good of experience. I didn't even know why I'm having him. I'm just, you know, just, just talking him on the phone for like 30 minutes, 30 <laughs> minutes, and not really getting, getting, getting anything out of it. If anything, I'm just kind of wasting my time. I'd rather be napping or, or just training or, you know, just, just doing something more, more valuable, I guess. Has this whole experience made you think, okay, you know, at some point I need to get a man, just so that there's a buffer, someone there to help you, guide you, negotiate? Have you changed your stance, or has that not happened as a result of this experience? Uh, you know, as of right now, I just I don't really see why I should change anything. Because I mean, you know, people say, oh, you gotta go to training camp, you gotta do this, you gotta do that, you gotta do this, and and I'm like, man. You don't even train with me. You don't even know anything about me. Why are you telling me I need to do this and do that? So far, I mean, I take fights and I so far I, I win every fight and and uh, so far so good and I'm just trying to get better and I'm I'm just trying to surround myself with like positive minded people instead of people. Oh, you should be doing this and that. Mm-hmm. In my opinion, if it's not broken, don't try to fix it kind of thing. So. I don't know. I just try to enjoy every day of my life and just try to get better and train and, and I try to stay positive. So Dana White did a few interviews about you and, and, and at first we found out that they took you off uh, the website and that kind of raised a few uh, red flags. And then he said that he met with you and your wife and he offered you a deal. And then as he put it, he said that you flaked on him um, and that you wanted a new deal. Um, and that's when he said, you know what, great guy, but we're going to we're going to part ways. From your perspective, what happened? Yeah, well, I honestly, I don't really understand what what, what like flake means, you know, because uh, I never, I never really flake on anything, you know. If I say I'm gonna show up, I always show up. If I say I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do something. It's just we're negotiating the contract, and and I guess you know maybe I didn't get back as fast as I should have, or 
I don't know. I don't know exactly, you know, why I kind of kind of pissed off Dana. But you know, I obviously don't want to be on the bad side, you know, because as we all know, things can uh, turn kind of south or north, however you want to look at it, <laughs> really quick. So I'm just I'm just happy that there's like we had a really nice nice chat with Mick Maynard and the. Uh, um, we chatted for like 15, 20 minutes and then we came to agreement and I'm just happy that like it was easy to talk to him because with Dana, he's a little bit kind of like, um, it's a little bit nerve wracking talking with him because, you know, he, he for example, you say something he's not going to like and all of a sudden, you know, I thought we were buddies and next thing, maybe we're not buddies and I don't know. I'm just happy that there's matchmaker, Mick Manor, I can just deal with him and Dana, I can just show him great fights. Huh. So, so Mick was the one that kind of came in and and got the deal done and saved the situation. Yeah, I I, I, I emailed Mick and then uh, he called me and we had like a nice chat and because um, I always wanted to fight UFC, I just asked maybe a little bit for a little bit more money and I guess Dana yeah, got pissed off on that and uh, you know it's not a big deal. I'm just happy that everything kind of got smoothed out and there's no kind of bad feelings and. You know, I'm just I'm excited to feel a great fight, and uh, I'm training very hard, and I don't want to be really fighting anywhere else. Just like like I said before, the USADA aspect, I really like how in UFC all the guys are you know kind of um, doing all the drug tests and, and all that. So it was a little bit kind of nerve wracking couple of weeks because in terms of because you know like when then said like I like that and everything because I knew I didn't, and it was kind of for two weeks I didn't have a job and. Everyone's like, oh, what are you going to do? And I just kind of wanted some time to myself and just kind of think to settle. And then, and then just, uh, you know, call Nick and chat with him. And, you know, because I want to fight. And there's a lot of great up and comer dual fivers in the division now. And I don't want to be wasting time. I just want to, you know, I don't want to be taking a long, long break. I want to be always in action. Because not fighting for a while, it can get rusty. So I don't want to get rusty. You know, I want to be in the mix. When you heard Dana, who's so powerful and the president of the organization, say that we're moving on, was that news to you? Had you not been told that? And if so, how did you react? Yeah, you know, I was a little bit like, oh, shit, you know, like, <laughs> it's, not, it's not a nice feeling. Um, you know, I mean, I've been fired before. And the thing is, I've always been doing a good job, like, since. Even, like, you look at my history, I've been always kind of, like, most valuable employee of the company. Okay. Whenever it works. And, uh, seeing, like, the, the boss, like, the whole show saying, like, those kind of things. And, I don't know, honestly, I didn't even know what to think. I just want to give it some time, let, let it, kind of, everything settle down, and and then just, um, and then just uh, talk to them once they kind of, like, you know, um, off the fresh food kind of thing, like, following the week. Since you've been back, since you agreed to the new deal, have you talked to Dana? Have you cleared the air with him about the whole flaking thing? Uh, no, no, I didn't talk to Dana, but I, like I talked to Mick, and you know, we had a really good conversation, and and uh, it's nothing personal with Dana. I know he's like a great businessman, and and all that. It's just uh, um, in in my case, I think it's a little bit easier for me to d deal with uh, Mick Maynard. Because, like, with Dana, he's a little bit, sometimes, you know, he's a little bit harsh in, in, in a way, you know. Mm -hmm. so I don't want to be kind of burning bridges with uh, with him, and especially because I'm negotiating for Misha Serkin uh, as a manager kind of thing. Yeah. So it's kind of just a weird situation, and then I'm just happy all that has passed. And uh, I'm just, now it's kind of, like, oh, I have to concentrate on just on, on the fight itself. So that's that's kind of nice, you know. And and here's the biggest question: Are you happy with the deal that you signed? Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's it's a it's a nice deal, you know. It's a it's a it's a six fight deal, a bunch of fights, and um, yeah, like I'm I'm happy. I'm happy to be part of the show. I've been getting a couple other deals, but I was not even looking to to join any other shows or anything. I was just um, like I said, I wanted some time to some air to clear out, and then just. Uh, talk with UFC and because I think I already put in like a, four good performances and I just want to keep, keep that going and um, just be part of the kind of like the most respected show.
And, and just out of curiosity, is this the deal that you agreed to? Was it the original deal that they offered, or you, were you able to get what you wanted? Um, I, yeah, I got a little bit, um, a little bit more. Okay. Um, closer to kind of what, what I wanted. Um, so I, I think things worked out, you know, for me. Um, there's always, of course, you can always get something better and better and better. Yeah. But given the position that I've been and things that I've done, and I think it's a fair deal, and I'm I'm, I'm happy with it. And uh, yeah, now I can leave all that behind and just con- kind of concentrate on, uh, on on just fights, you know. So this morning they announced that you're fighting Volkan Ozdemir in Stockholm, May 28th. How do you feel about this matchup? Um. It's a, it's a tough fight, you know. Volkan, he's a he's a great fighter. He's a he's a young guy, you know. He's a he's a good frame, good athlete. He hits hard. He, he, you know, he's a hard takedown. He's a good record. You know, he's a tough guy. He's like a real real specimen. You know, I see how a bunch of bunch of kind of veterans that are sitting in the top brackets how they would try to avoid him and stuff like that. Um, he's a tough fight, you know. It's one of those guys that. Like similar to Nikita Krila, you know, he can knock you out, and you know he's a tough on the ground, and he's a scrappy guy. So you know, tough fight. Were you surprised when they offered you him because uh, he's not, you know, he, Krilov is a is a bigger name. It felt kind of like you were kind of moving up the ladder, and he's not the biggest name. Only has one fight in the UFC. Was was this one that that you kind of felt was on your radar, or was it a bit surprising when they brought him to your attention? Um, I was a little bit surprised. Considering like um, how all the rankings play out and all that, this is just like another criteria of its own. Um, I just, you know, I, obviously I've seen his great performance against OSP. Uh, OSP is a super tough challenger. You know, he went to decision with John Jones. It just shows like the, you know, the level where Vulcan is at, and he's definitely a tough competitor. So. I kind of know he'll be in the mix. He'll be in there. And maybe, you know, I could say, oh, maybe he doesn't deserve. I already have four fights in UFC and so on and so on. But he had, a, you know, a great fight himself. He beat uh, a ranked guy, and he's in the mix. And reality is, like, there's right now all the other guys are kind of booked. Um, when I talked to uh, Mick Maynard and he offered that fight, there was no kind of other guys. Everyone had uh, something in the works, you know. Shogun didn't fight yet, and et cetera. So I kind of, he told me, like, you know, that's a fight. There's a, there's a fight now, and, you know. So I kind of, I didn't want to say, oh, no, he doesn't deserve it. Kind of wait and wait and wait till something comes up, something something that is, like, nice. Um, I just, you know, he's a tough guy, and he's a tough fight, and... Let's just make it happen, you know. Put up great fights to all the fans. I think it's all about that, you know. I'm not, I'm not just looking forward to like, oh, give me this guy, give me that guy. He's a tough guy, and it makes sense. And you know, the winner of that, I guarantee you, he's a like a real deal. And in my opinion, could be top five, no problem. So we'll see what happens. In, in Toronto, you said you wanted to fight Shogun, um, which seemed like an idea a lot of people like, but uh, obviously you didn't get that fight. He just fought this past weekend. Do you think if you would have gotten the deal done sooner, you would have gotten that fight? Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't think so. Okay. Because um, because when I asked him uh, to fight, you know, we still had a bunch of time, and um, I'm pretty sure. He was asked if he wants to fight me, and the other fight happened. So I don't know if she wanted to fight me. I'm, I'm sure in the future we can work something out, and I hope we'll work something out in the future. Because for me personally, I would love to fight somebody like that just so that um, I can kind of rub my name against like a legend, a true pioneer, uh, a true a true Hall of Famer. Champion and UFC champion. And I don't know. I just I would, I would love to fight him, and because a lot of people know who he is, and um, a lot of people would tune in to see him fight. So I would love to fight him, so that all those people would get to know who uh, Misha Serkinov is as well. And you know, I think I earned it, and I've been fighting for a long time, and we'll see. We'll see what happens.
I have to be honest, I knew you were popular in, in Toronto, but I was blown away by the reaction to your victory over Krylov in December. That place exploded. I mean, it was super loud in there, showing you so much love. Were you surprised by the reaction as well? Yeah, you know, I, I've never experienced anything like that. I mean, the crowd, like I, I fought before, I think the biggest crowd was like 6,000 or something, seven or 8,000. I don't remember the exact number, but in Toronto, we had like almost 20,000 people and everyone after the win, everyone kind of like, you know, was so generally happy. And the, the energy, electricity in the air was just, it was crazy. I, I, I didn't even know how to react to it. I just like, I just got on top of the cage. I was like, man, I, just, I love this thing. I just yelled. And huh. It was really, really cool. You know, it was like, it was priceless experience. It's something that I'll never forget till I die. Yeah, what a, what a moment and uh, what a performance for you. Um, as far as Canadian MMA is concerned, it obviously just got a boost with the return of, of GSP. What, what, when you heard about that, are you the kind of guy who thinks, okay, this is great for me because now you know the market will get more attention. Maybe we can fight on the same card because you know a lot of people, including myself, think that you know you're part of that new generation of of Canadian MMA stars. You're you're that next step. Um, did you feel the same way? Did you think the same way when you found out that he was coming back? I, uh, you know, for sure, because uh, I really like GSP to begin with. He's uh, one of my favorite fighters, and uh, seeing him come back. It kind of it shows a lot, you know. Um, first of all, he doesn't he doesn't need to be back, you know. But it shows that he's always training. I've seen him; uh, he's in a really really good shape, and uh, I'm I'm really happy that he's back. Because again, if I if we fight on the same card, there's going to be you know more people will tune in. All the all the old school like previous fans that they used to watch GSP, you know, they're going to watch and they'll see some new faces. So hopefully. We can put him in the same car with GSP. That would be nice. And, yeah. And just in general, um, it, it's good to see him back. You know, I, I do think that this thing is a really tough fight to, uh, from a long layoff, like you know, over what or, or three years. Yeah. Back and he didn't compete yeah. in such a long time. And the first fight back, you know, it's somebody like Michael Michael Bisping, and like <laughs> Bisping is a very very tough individual. You know, so a very very tough fight. I like. I'm I'm extremely excited to see it, and uh, yeah, just a very tough fight for GSP. Um, a couple of months ago, we had Rumble Johnson on the show, and he specifically mentioned you as one of the up-and-comers. He, he said he was impressed with you, and he thought that you were very close. We were talking to him about the lack of contenders at 205. Did you hear or read his comments, and if so, what did you think of him? Yeah, no, I, I, of course, I've seen it. Like A bunch of people tagged me into it, and I'm very, very thankful you know, like it's it's amazing to get um, recognition from another like like a like a he's like a really high level fighter. You know, he's one of the most feared guys in a division in a, in a, in a, all in the May kind of period. You know, he knocks people out and he's just you know like a really kind of very tough and scary fighter. And to get recognition from uh, from from him is very very it means a lot to me. Like a lot, you know. Do you think he beats Cormier next month? I, you know, this fight, like first fight, I picked uh, Daniel Cormier to win. But uh, in a in a rematch, it's going to be very very interesting because um, we all know that uh, we all see what happened in the first fight. So I feel like there's a lot of blueprint for Anthony Johnson to get better, and. Um, if he gets better, it's going to be a lot, a lot tougher for Daniel Cormier to win. Mm. Where I don't, I don't like Daniel Cormier. Like he's a he's a beast in, his, in himself. But I think that we're not going to see like a, a way more improved uh, Daniel Cormier just based on you know he had been injured and and um, he didn't like compete and stuff like that. He's a champion. Anthony Johnson would have to beat the champion. But I think, if anything, this is the best chance for Anthony Johnson to become a, a like a belt holder. I think because he already seen what he needs to do, and he sees the game plan. And hopefully, if he can stick to the game plan, I think it could be a good night for Anthony Johnson. But again. You know, Cormier showed us how it could be done, right? So it's going to be a very interesting fight. You got to pick a winner. But, Don't sit on the fence. Pick a winner. Who do you got? You know, if I had to pick a winner, yeah, 
you know what? I'm going to go with uh, probably still being a Clemmy Jazz based right. on uh, wrestling. Yeah. But it's going to be a close fight this time. Yeah, and how far away do you think you are from that conversation? Like, do you think you're one fight away? Do you think you're two fights? What, what do you think in your mind? Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. I think that, well, right now I have one fight for sure. Sure. And, uh, and then maybe get another fight after that with somebody like maybe Shogun, you know, if, he's, uh, if he wants to. And if it's not Shogun, then I don't know. I don't know. Like, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be ready and... Uh, Ideally, maybe one, two more fights, and then somebody like that, I, I, would, I would give it a try myself. All right. By the way, how do we get you and Chris Tapp's Porzingis in the same room? I, I want that photo. I want the two Latvian superstars together. How do we make that happen? Do you, do you have similar friends? Do you run in the same circles? Um, not really, not really. But um, I don't know. Like I, I heard he's, he's in, the, in, in the U.S. right now, right? Yeah, he plays for the New York Knicks. He's unbelievable. You've heard of him, right? Yeah, of course, of course. So it's just a matter of time when, because he, he travels a lot too, right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I would love to be in one room and one day maybe three of us take a picture. That would be great. Oh, wow. I don't, I don't know about me, but I just want to see both of you, the two Latvian stars together. You know he's a big MMA fan. He's always tweeting about Connor and watching UFC, so I'm sure he knows who you are. Yeah, well, it has to be three of us because you're the one that will kind of connect us together. <laughs> but, uh, oh. He will definitely hear you talk, so... That would be nice. All right, I'm going to work on it, all right? I don't know him personally. I'd love to know him personally, but uh, I don't... I would right. love to know him personally, too. Him <laughs> last, he's, a, he's a really big deal. He's a very big deal. How, how big of a deal? Are, are you getting more media attention over there? Um, a little bit more, yeah. <clears throat> Especially with, like, um, uh, kind of younger MMA community, with the kind of, you know, the younger generation, or everyone following UFC, everybody kind of wants to know who is who, and... Uh, Lately, I've been getting a lot of um, kind of guys adding me from Latvia as well. Mm -hmm. So my fan base is slowly, slowly growing. But uh, again, you know, rubbing off shoulders, you know, somebody like one of the biggest kind of hockey guys in Latvia, that would be great. Yeah. All right. Um, and by the way, it's basketball. Sorry? Uh, Chris Tapps is basketball. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I thought you said hockey. Oh, no, sorry. I'm just like, right now I'm really, really sick, actually. I'm, I'm just like, I don't know if I have a fever or not. I'm just oh, no. I'm not thinking straight, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, we'll let you go. Uh, congratulations on the new deal. Congratulations on being back in the UFC. Uh, congrats on getting the fight. I'm looking forward to it. May 28th, the return of one Misha Serkinov. And uh, it's good to have you on the show for the first time, Misha. I wish you all the best. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Ariel. Thanks for having me, and uh, sorry I didn't get back to you earlier. No problem. No problem at all. There he is, Misha Serkinov, stopping by the Pride of Latvia. He's referring to the fact that when the whole thing happened um, with him and trying to get into, uh, you know, getting his deal with UFC, trying to get re-signed, all that stuff, I, of course, hit him up quite a bit, and uh, for a while I didn't hear back from him, but uh, now we're all good. He has signed a deal with UFC. He is back, and uh, he is fighting on May 28th.